putting an end to identity politics. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. According to the Times, which had reviewed internal budget guidance from the OMB, the Trump administration would cut or delay funding for border surveillance. They'd cut or delay funding for radar technology, patrol boats, and maybe most crucially, customs officers, all to ask taxpayers to pay for the wall. Funding to upgrade surveillance aircraft, extremely effective at stopping illegal crossings of the border, particularly drugs, denied. Funding to hire new customs officers, denied. Funding for video surveillance with infrared cameras in areas with high incidence of border crossings, cut to, quote, offset the costs of presidential priorities, unquote. Welcome back, everybody. That was Chuck Schumer actually making a case that he wants tougher border security, et cetera, et cetera. What utter nonsense. Glad you guys are here. KJRadio.com so you can find us on the Internet. Uh, 844-551-8255. We're talking about DACA. The Democrats have been they've been found out. They hate it, too. They hate that we know what's going on. They hate that we're we figured out that Fast and Furious was part of their scheme. These kids that arrived on the border, I don't know, four or five years ago that had been dispersed was part of the scheme. Uh, what they call it, chain migration or whatever, that's part of the scheme. And then we found out DACA is part of the scheme. They don't care about the dreamers. They care about their vote. The, in two places in a leaked memo that wasn't supposed to get out, they said both times, it is our electoral future depends on getting DACA passed. Do you think they care that these kids are going to be a burden to the taxpayer? I don't remember the statistics, but statistics, but you must see how many of these kids can't read, don't want to read, how many commit crime. It, it's ridiculous that we would even consider it, at least in the form that they have it. And certainly we shouldn't allow for any chain migration. Anyway, they implemented DACA without approval of Congress. It's in direct conflict with with the Constitution of the United States. And the Democrats know this. And it was typical for Obama because he pretty much ignored legality for anything he wanted to get approved. He wanted Obamacare. He didn't care what you wanted. He ignored legality. And then they got the dirt on Justice Roberts and he decided, oh, okay, whatever, since y'all got the dirt on me. And he let it go. And they did the same thing with this. The, the Supreme Court should have thrown Dak out anyway. We didn't need to elect Donald Trump for this. DACA provided a political ploy for the Republicans to appear xenophobic, even racist. Because any attempt to unwind this executive order was going to be perceived, even if it wasn't, it was going to be sold by the left. Oh, these guys are a bunch of racists. They don't want a bunch of Mexicans in here. Forget that we got a population of a third Mexican. There's not a Republican on the planet who would say anything bad about Mexicans, but I'll tell you what, you can find Democrats that'll do it all the time. So a lady in Florida that says, what are we going to do? We're not going to have any gardeners and pool boys if you deport them. Got no press. He, it could have been a Republican assemblyman, and you'd be hearing, it would be plastered on billboards. Anyway, uh, Democrats believed wrongly that they could use these emotions tied to kids coming over to fool Americans. And so we would change our views. The political landscape would move into their favor. <coughs> Excuse me. And these children made perfect fodder. And then under DACA, because these leftist cities and states became emboldened by Barack Obama and his stance on immigration. So they created these fake places called sanctuary states and sanctuary cities. And by the way, the legislators who believe that there exists things like sanctuary cities and sanctuary states are criminals, as far as I'm concerned, because they do not exist. It is against our laws and against the Constitution to, to, to give sanctuary to people that are not citizens of the, of the United States unless we declare them refugees. But DACA and complicit leftists in cities allow these dreamers essentially the rights of citizens. Dreamers receive social security cards. They're getting into college. Your scholarship money pays for them. They have medical. They can get jobs. You name it. They have better rights than you as a citizen. And they go, oh, they're under the radar. 
they have to live in the shadows. And so finally, we get a president who's unafraid to tackle these issues. He says, you know what? I'll do it. So he rescinds Barack Obama's illegal executive order. I keep stressing that because I want you to know it's illegal. He forced Congress to act. And this was a a stroke of genius because Trump is a genius. (laughs) Lefties, hey, lefties out there, Trump's a genius. See, the left can agree on a lot, but they can't agree on little. The issue is complicated, too complicated to attempt to uh, nuance it in such a short amount of time because they've only got a few months to get this thing done. What age do you cut it off and why? How do you make that decision? What do you say about the ones that have criminal records? What do you say about the ones doing? But what, you know, there's a lot of nuances to this. It is a super complicated issue because and I'll tell you why, because even conservatives say if you were brought over here by your parents up to a certain age and we talked about this. You, you, I can, I can rationalize before, if you came over here before the age of four, there's no question in my mind, you don't know anything about your other country. Now I could say, well, it offers an opportunity. You could go back to your country and there's, I'm sure you have relatives. Now the problem there is you could argue, yeah, but I don't have my way of life. Let's say you're you're four and you find out you're not legal. You're 17. You you don't know anything. You, if you went to Mexico, man, they'd have to put you on suicide watch. <laughs> you'd be you'd be like, I I just cannot live here. The streets are not paved. The dogs have three legs and they run around peeing on everything. I mean, you you wouldn't even understand it. I've seen poverty. I I wouldn't want to live there, but I can handle it. See, I, when I went to live with my papa. And I could see through the bottom of his floor down to the to the ground. I knew we weren't rich. <laughs> I knew there was no inheritance. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, yeah, we got all these, you know, the uh, Donald Trump said enough is enough. So the DACA expires in March. And the Democrats don't have a plan. So the nonsense begins. And we did a story a while back of Kamala Harris, one of the dumbest people on the planet, I swear to you. And she tweeted something to the effect that if we don't approve DACA, we're going to, without the DREAM Act, I think the tweet was thousands of teachers could be deported, right? Thousands of teachers could be deported. And my first thought was, we have illegals teaching our kids? Since when? You know, I thought, that these are the jobs that Americans wanted. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong here. Don't Americans want teaching jobs? That's not exactly picking beans in the hot California sun. But as Harris and other Democrats seek to lecture us on jobs that these dreamers may lose, they neglect to tell you that the, of the jobs that these dreamers are taking away from American dreamers. And every time I hear the word dreamer, I think to myself, Are we going to allow them to steal yet another word? Families getting brushed aside, losing scholarships and all this because we go, oh, well, we got a Hispanic girl that we're bringing into the thing. Yeah, but she's illegal. Why should my, you know, qualified this person not make it? Anyway, Chuck Schumer, he got so desperate to to save these Democrat votes that he's searching for. He dedicated his Twitter account. To dreamers, I stand with dreamers is his entire Twitter page. His face isn't on it. Nothing. I stand with dreamers. Yeah, you should put I stand with Mexican dreamers, Chuck, because you don't stand with black dreamers. You don't stand with American dreamers. Nancy Pelosi evoked the name of God when trying to further the political agenda of uh, dreamers at the time. She says, we're not going to turn this country into a reign of terror of domestic enforcement and have the as and have the DACA, the dreamers pay that price. But I'm optimistic. I always have been. God is with us on this. Psst. I always love when these leftists invoke God. It's like anything else. If they invoke God, they don't really want him. They don't really care about him. That's just playing to the audience. They are the most godless creatures on the planet. But now we know because of this memo, these leftists don't give a crap about dreamers. Not at all. 
They've not implemented a single plan on how to better the lives of these dreamers. If they get amnesty, then what? Do the Democrats keep track of them? Do they track where these kids live, what they're doing, and if America's helping them find a better way of life? You know they won't. They don't stand with dreamers or any other minority group that they claim to represent. Blacks, minority, you know, women, Guatemalan midgets, whatever. They don't care. They just want the votes. It's that simple. He won't stop until he's the top-rated radio talk show host in America. What kind of weird competitive freak are you? This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show.